Hey there, welcome back. Well, I thought I, what I would do is just kind of show you some of the things that I'm growing in the greenhouse. I've looked at my last frost date, and, which for me is just right around April 1st, so April Fool's Day, which is kind of a scary thing. <laughs> we had all the seedlings started. We lost all of our electricity, so no heat. We lost all of our water pipes froze, so there was no water for the seedlings. So I thought I would just take you and show you what seedlings we're growing inside right now. Okay, so we have a lettuce blend, and I always like to write down the date. So this is the date that I uh, started these seeds all over again, and they have started putting on their true leaves. So these are the cotyledons, these are the true leaves. So I can go ahead and either pot these up or I can plant them straight into the ground. We have dahlias dahlias bok choy I have tons of bok choy so we have cosmos cosmos tons of cosmos 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 and then here we have this is alyssum some borage all right here we have kohlrabi and then artichokes more kohlrabi cilantro i have a ton of cilantro growing out of my gardens they just self-seeded they're everywhere but these are plants that i'm going to share or maybe even sell okay so that's why i started some cilantro in the greenhouse okay, okay. so we have dill this is the dill right there so i have a whole flat of dill another whole flat of dill um some more lettuce some german chamomile i'm so excited about that some calendula so this is uh, chamomile calendula. More calendula, German chamomile, some strawberries, the alpine, mescaline mix, mescaline mix, mescaline mix. And each one of these flats is 72 cells. You can see, I try to be really careful and only get one plant, one seed in each cell, but sometimes they don't come up for whatever reason. Um, then we have mescaline, more cilantro, and lettuce. Then over here, we have black-eyed Susans, black-eyed Susans, um, marigolds, evening primrose, which this really hasn't started to germinate yet, but you can see I planted these a little bit later. Shasta daisies, tarragon, more black-eyed Susans, coleus, baby's breath, black seeded simpson, it's a different kind of lettuce, um, parsley, flat leaf, Italian, snapdragons, they're, they're taking their time, oh, there's a tomato, let me pull that out, uh, so the snapdragons are something, <laughs> a tiny little seed, it's really hard to get just one in each cell. Whenever but I see this, I always kind of laugh. So this was a friend of mine who wrote this tag for me. It says, forget you not. These are forget me nots. More artichokes, mescaline. Um, more snapdragons, snapdragons, lemon balm. Uh, snapdragons, snapdragons, artichokes, artichokes, coleus. We have chives. Then this we have snapdragons, artichokes, celery, cleome. Cleome, however you pronounce it. I never know how to pronounce that. Is it Cleome or Cleome? <laughs> then we have, these are some that I have potted up. So as soon as I saw that, so this is the cotyledon. As soon as I saw it was putting on its first leaves, I started potting stuff up. So I have a lot more of that to do. So this is bok choy, cosmos, This is alyssum, cosmos, cosmos, and bachelor buttons. Bachelor buttons is something that they're just the cutest little, basically a wildflower. And uh, if you plant them straight into the ground, they do great. If you start them indoors, I've heard a lot of people say that they are just not as strong and robust and have a lot of turgor in that they they have a really strong neck. And so, I mean, I've done it both ways. So you could do it both ways as far as I'm concerned. That's what I do. 
so uh yeah the bachelor buttons the reason that i wanted to start some of these indoors by seed is because i want to put them in a specific placement in my garden and sometimes it's just easier to be able to walk in here do a little bit of shopping um, get my little wagon and go out there and put things exactly where i want to place them so and i you know with larkspur or um cilantro a lot of times i'm just pulling those seeds off the plant and i'm throwing them straight on the ground and then what i do out in the gardens is i just thin them out wherever i don't want them i'm just pulling out like you would pull out weeds i'm just pulling out cilantro or i'm just pulling out larkspur so but by doing doing it this way i get to place stuff exactly where i want it to go basically this is a whole table of just snapdragons i want to have snapdragons everywhere and it's really hard to see i know from this distance but they're really just kind of taking their time but on the end here i do have some some cosmos and uh, this was a tray i dropped actually the wind blew it over and i lost everything in there except for what you see there but that's some sweet alyssum that i need to pot up or plant directly straight into the ground oh, i almost forgot the uh, tomatoes and peppers so we have beefsteak tomatoes and we have brandywine tomatoes cherry tomatoes we have anaheim peppers jalapeno tomatoes oh cumin basil black creme tomatoes more cherry tomatoes so i didn't have enough to fill up this tray so i just put this extra marker here so i could show that here more jalapenos yellow pear tomatoes man these are prolific producers um, big red tomatoes cayenne pepper eggplant and san marzano tomatoes Here's my little setup that I have out here. I moved these outside because I forgot to talk about these. And uh, yeah, so this is my little setup that I have outside. I moved these outside just so they could get more direct sunlight. And then I have here some things that I did not start from seed, but I just pulled out of the ground and divided. I have salvia. This is all salvia. And then I have thyme, thyme goji berries, sweet mint, goji berries, and oregano. Okay, so let me see if I can get a good picture here. So as you can see, I only have so much space, right? So in these 72 cell packs, they fit in a 10 by 20 tray. So we call them 10, 20 trays. And I can fit 72 in one spot, whereas after I pot them up, then I have to really make some decisions, some real estate decisions, real and real estate <laughs> decisions um, about what I want to pl plant directly into the ground and what I want to pot up because by the time I pot it up to a three inch pot, now I can only fit 18 plants in that same space, a 10 by 20 tray so i would be overrun by plants right so i have to make some decisions okay what am i going to plant directly into the ground and what am i going to pot up so that is just a, you know kind of a personal decision but i only have so much space so you can see here right behind me and then on that side as well so now, my greenhouse or hoop house is eight is uh, 24 by 28. i have to just use my space wisely and i have i am fully prepared to be able to put like just plant straight on the ground and be able to just close batten down the hatches so to speak i can close both of these doors and then i have the greenhouse where the sides roll up so you can see right here i have a crank and i can crank it up or down and so i can batten down the hatches i can roll everything down if we have some kind of a big weather event a big storm or a lot of wind or something like that but in general i don't have any supplemental heat out here i don't have any electricity i don't have i have running water that's about it <laughs> so uh let's go back to this right. what happened was i sort of ran out of these 72 cell trays I had more seeds than I that I still wanted to plant 
So I started putting seeds in these um, three inch pots in 10 by 20 trays. Uh, but these are the ones that I planted in the bigger three inch pots because I ran out of the, the 72 cell packs. So I have carnations, lupine, this is one that just didn't get marked. That happens sometimes. Uh, I'll, I'll find out what it is when everything else starts growing and I'll match it and I'll see what, what it is. Uh, lupines gazania. More lupines gazania. B more borage. Carnations. Carnations, carnations, gazania. Um, carnations, carnations. Rosemary and carnations so I did count it up though and I want to say I have between six and seven thousand plants in the greenhouse right now so should be plenty right <laughs> but I am planning on doing some cut flowers and selling some plants and just putting lots and lots and lots of plants just all throughout my edible landscaping and a lot of this stuff like the lettuces the cilantro the bok choy, um, perhaps the kohlrabi. If you know anything about kohlrabi, go ahead and put it down here in the uh, in the comments below because I, this is my first time to grow it. I just thought, you know, I got a free uh, packet of seeds with my order from Baker Creek Seeds or something, and so I thought, well, I'm just going to go ahead and grow it and see see what it. It's a pretty plant. It's a un very unique looking plant. If I can find a picture, I'll put it up here. But uh, if you know anything about kohlrabi, or if you have recipes or the best way to eat it, I would love to know. So <clears throat> that's kind of the grand tour. I still have places where I can pot some things up and I had to go over and get some more compost from my compost pile. And I'm about to mix some more. Um, I don't really need seed starting mix right now at this point. What I need, so seed starting mix and potting mix is two different things. You really have different recipes, kind of like when you make biscuits or when you make pancakes. You have different recipes where you use so much of your compost, so much peat moss, so much perlite or vermiculite or whatever. But once I get into that mode where I'm gonna be potting some of this stuff up, I guess I can um, just show you what my recipe is. But definitely always, for me, I always kind of think of compost as the flour. It's the base, right? So a flower as in F-L-O-U-R, as in ground up wheat that you put in your pancakes and your biscuits and your cinnamon rolls and all that stuff. But it's the base. And, and I use my homemade compost for all my different recipes that I use for either seed starting or potting mix or uh, whatever. So I have so much to do. <laughs> I have so many plants that I need to pot up. And um, I'll either be potting these up or I will be planting these straight into the ground out in my edible landscapes. Got a long way to go, but it's fun. I love every minute of it. All right, that's gonna do it for this one. Until next time, bye for now. Oh, y'all don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. And if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. And if you know someone who's really into it, there's a little share button right down here. You can click that share button. All right, until next time, bye for now.